it's a question of education to teach people to be on their guard against the sort of verbal booby traps into which they're always being laid, to analyze the kind of things that are said to them. Uh, I think it's terribly important to insist on individual values, that every human being is unique. And it is, of course, on this genetical basis that the whole idea of the value of freedom is based. This is Aldous Huxley, a man haunted by a vision of hell on earth. Mr. Huxley wrote Brave New World, a novel that predicted that someday the entire world would live under a frightful dictatorship. Today, Mr. Huxley says that his fictional world of horror is probably just around the corner for all of us. There are a number of impersonal forces which are pushing in the direction of less and less freedom. The first of them can be called overpopulation. The whole essence of biological life on Earth is a question of balance. And what we have done is to practice death control in a most intensive manner without balancing this with birth control at the other end. In the underdeveloped countries, people have less to eat and less goods. And the central government has to take over more and more responsibility for keeping the ship of state on an even keel. And then, of course, you're likely to get social unrest under such conditions with, again, an intervention of the central government. One sees here a pattern which seems to be pushing very strongly towards a totalitarian regime. Are there specific devices or uh, methods of communication which diminish our freedoms? Well, there are certainly devices which can be used in this way. Hitler used terror on the one kind, brute force on the one hand, but he also used a very efficient form of propaganda. He had the radio, which he used to the fullest extent, mm -hmm. and was able to impose his will on an immense mass of people. I mean, the Germans were a highly educated people. We mustn't be caught by surprise by our own advancing technology. This has happened again and again in history and suddenly people have found themselves in a situation which they didn't foresee and doing all sorts of things they didn't really want to do. At present, the television, I think, is being used quite harmlessly. But, I mean, imagine, which must be the situation in all communist countries, where the television, where it exists, is always saying the same thing the whole time. It's always driving along. It's drumming in of a single idea all the time. It's obviously an immensely powerful instrument. All technology is in itself morally neutral. These are just powers which can either be used well or ill. It's the same thing with atomic energy. We can either use it to blow ourselves up or we can use it as a substitute for the coal and the oil which are running out. In this book of mine, Brave New World, uh, I postulated a substance called Soma, which was a very versatile drug. It would make people feel happy in small doses, make them see visions in medium doses, and it would send them to sleep in large doses. I think it's quite on the cards that we may have drugs which will profoundly change uh, our mental states without doing us any harm. Well, what is going to happen in the future is the dictators will find, as the old saying goes, that you can do everything with bayonets except sit on them. But if you want to preserve your power indefinitely, you have to get the consent of the ruled. And this they will do, partly by drugs, partly by these uh, new techniques of propaganda. They will do it by bypassing the sort of rational side of man and appealing to his uh, subconscious and his uh, deeper emotions, making him actually love his Slavery. I mean, I think this is the danger, that actually people may be in some ways happy under the new regime, but they will be happy in situations where they oughtn't to be happy. Writing about American political campaigns, you say all that is needed is money and a candidate who can be coached to look sincere. Well, this is uh, this idea that the candidates had to be merchandised as though they were soap or toothpaste, and that you had to depend entirely on the personality. I'm, I mean, the personality is important, but there are certainly people with an extremely amiable personality, particularly on TV, who might not necessarily be very good uh, in positions of political trust. I mean, what does a democracy depend on? A democracy depends 
on the individual voter making an intelligent and rational choice for what he regards as his enlightened self-interest in any given circumstance. But what these people are doing is to try to bypass the rational side of man and to appeal directly to these unconscious forces below the surface so that you are in a way making nonsense of the whole democratic procedure which is based on conscious choice of, on rational grounds. Uh, I must say I still believe in democracy if we can make the best of the creative activities of the people on top plus those of the people on the bottom so much the better. Mr. Huxley, I surely thank you for spending this half hour with us and I wish you Godspeed, sir. Thank you. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who whet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily. They say, who shall see them? They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep.